Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Tech. Today we're going to be looking at this from Gelid. It is the Tranquilo Rev4 CPU cooler. If you want to click the links below in the description, it will take you to the cheapest price for this available in your country. Okay, so we've got the G-Lid Solutions Tranquilo Rev4, I think it's the correct way to pronounce this. Four heat pipe CPU cooler with PWM fan, which basically means the fan changes speed if you plug it into the right socket on your motherboard. Uh, it's got Hardware Info Excellent Awards in January 2018, so it's not brand, brand new, but it is compatible to Intel socket 775 all the way up to 1156. Doesn't mention anything about the 1200 series and also compatible AMDs from AM2, uh, AM3, uh, FM1, FM2 and so forth. So it's mainly designed for probably slightly older ones rather than your top end new ones. Um, but it potentially could check their website, it will give you a uh, bit more compatibility. It does actually say they're now compatible with AM4, so I'm guessing it will actually work with a 1200 as well. Um, usually if it works with 1151 socket it will work with a 1200 because it's practically the same. Um, so it tells you all about the information on the side. So you've got four power uh, heat pipes. I'm not sure why they're called power heat pipes but mm, there you go. You've got intelligence PWM curve so that means it basically makes the fan get faster and louder um, when the computer gets faster. Silent operation, high airflow, doubled layered uh, bladed fans and five year warranty gives you more specifications down there as well. A bit more on the back, again, pretty much what I've already told you uh, on there. Uh, and on this side, it shows you a bit more information as well. It shows you how the air gets pushed through to keep it cool. Okay, so what we got in the box, let's start off with these two bags here. You've got one bag for AMD, one for Intel, so it tells you how to fit each one with the specific manuals inside. You've got four clips to attach the fan to the cooler. The reason why four, two is for this one, but it gives you an option of adding a second fan on there if you wanted. Obviously, you'd have to go out and buy another fan if you did wish. And then you've got all your brackets, what would go on the back side of your motherboard, uh, which you'll need depending on which of the um, sockets and connections you're using but there is two instructions looks like one for AMD one for Intel you've got the fan itself which looks like it's nine blades four five six seven eight nine, yeah nine blades it's nothing special there's no anti-vibration or anything on there uh, it's quite strong feeling blades on there so it gives you a rough idea but the, as I said, there's no rubberized anything, no anti-vibration or anything on there. The back's pretty straightforward. It's DC 12 0.25 and 1000 RPM. So it's not the fastest of fans either. You do have a cable on there, which is a four pin PWM, which basically means it plugs into a four pin um, socket on your motherboard or header, should I say. That cable to me looks like it's gonna be roughly 30 centimeters long. Oh no, a little bit out. It's 50 centimeters long, so 500 millimeters. So that's that's pretty much long enough you'll need to be honest for a CPU cooler. If you need anything longer than that, you're putting it in the wrong place. In all honesty, um, but there we go. So it gives you a, a rough idea of what the fan itself looks like. Nothing too special. This is the cooler with heat pipes. You can see the four copper heat pipes. It looks like there's eight, but it isn't. It's one goes round, then two, three, and four. Uh, it does have a nice shiny base there with heat pipes, as you can see. And that's where your thermal paste will go, and obviously that'll attach to your motherboard, depending on the fittings it will need. And that's the top view. It's got, obviously, the name across the top. You can see the fins. You can partially see through the fins there you go gives you a rough idea uh, so they're not the most densest um, of fins but saying that they're generally good enough for uh, for m most usage to attach it you get your fan obviously position your cable whichever side you wish 
you get two of these clips. We went all tangled together. There we go, finally. Okay, and you get one clip, you put it over the fan there and there, and what you do is basically push this bit into there. Usually fine though, it's usually best pushing that into the gap and then over, but it can differ per model, so we'll try it this way and see how it stretches. Okay, to fit this, what you have to do is not do what you would think is connected up to there and there. You would actually connect it to the holes between the fans, which is there and there, and then link it over, and it will fit in the grip on the bottom side, if I can actually get it to do it. like that okay so not 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 the easiest so I'll show you again these things can always be a bit of a pain so you hook it into the fans and then push down and it clips like that you can then get another fan if you wished depending obviously the model of fan you're getting but if you do get a fan let's say one like this be cool one it hasn't got that separator in the middle uh, like this one does. You need to have a fan like that, otherwise it isn't going to fit. So you need to have one what's got the gap, and then you put that one there, and then click those off. Obviously you need to make sure they're both blowing that way, um, or the same direction, otherwise if you've got one blowing that way, one blowing that way, it's not going to cool down properly. You're basically uh, uh, pushing air against each fan. Um, so, But that's the basics to it. There isn't much to see. Uh, we'll attach it to a motherboard and give it some testing in a few seconds. Okay, down to testing. In basics, all testing is done on the same machine, with the same version of Windows, with the same version of programs. We disable internet access, so no programs, updates or anything can be installed or updates what can affect any of the results. All background tasks which are non-essential get disabled, so again they will not affect the testing. The testing room has air conditioning slash heaters built in to keep the temperature at 18.5 degrees Celsius. Also decibel levels are at a steady 45.6 decibels. When testing things like fans, we set the speeds at 50% and 100% and not auto, because obviously if you've got something set at auto, it will adjust the fan speed to up and down to adjust the temperature to the optimal temperature, so it can affect results. So we set the fan speeds at set uh, speeds like 50% and 100%. All testing is done on a 10700K i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, as well as a FireCuda SSD and the same motherboard and all the other components are the same for every single test. Full specifications are in the description. Okay, so down to testing. In this first test, we check the idle temperature in Celsius. This is with a fan running at 50% speed. So the fan is set at 50%, so it won't go faster or slower. And the computer is basically just sitting in Windows doing nothing. Here you can see the Tranquilo 4 is actually the hottest one we've tested at 23 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's not the best, but it is also the cheapest one compared to obviously the Intel stock cooler, which is generally free. On this next test, we basically start the machine up and run it at full load. So that means the processor is running flat out with the fan speed at 50%. And you can see here the Tranquilo 4 struggles. It's managing 92 degrees Celsius compared to a lot of the others in the high 80s and low 60s. So it's not running too well when obviously you're limiting the fan, which is a shame. Uh, but again, it is the cheapest one on the market. On this next test we do basically the same thing again but we put the fan speed on whack on 100%. You can see it does cool down a little bit better, 87 degrees Celsius, but it's just as if it just can't keep up with that socket. So in all reality, looking at this at the moment, I would say this would be best suited for something around the range of an i3 or an i5 or any other low range, mid range um, processors rather than a high end one. 
Um, we did the same test again, unfortunately, on this one. Um, it failed. It's basically where we overclocked the processor to 5.1 gigahertz. It was unfortunately unable to keep the uh, processor cool enough, uh, causing it to crash uh, with just the same with the Intel stock cooler. So again, I wouldn't re recommend this for overclocking either. So unfortunately, it's failed on that test. On the next test, we're just testing the sound levels with the fan at 50%. Uh, this obviously cooler only has one fan attached to it, so it uh, shouldn't be the noisiest on the market. Uh, and actually it is one of the quietest, but it performs the least best is probably the best way of putting it as well. So unfortunately, yeah, it is quiet, but it doesn't have that performance there to keep the coolness uh, on the CPU. Uh, we did actually refit the CPU a few times just to make sure it was snug and connected properly and there's a proper connection there was um, but unfortunately it just was unable to uh, keep it cool unless we had a faulty product but who knows uh, again we did the same test again but this time with the fan speed on 100% and the Trinquello again was the quietest out of the lot but again unfortunately uh, again with the performance it didn't bode too well so in conclusion, this is the cheapest um, heatsink and cooler we've tested on the list at the moment, with obviously the exception of the Intel stock cooler. Um, and, well, it performs the same way as well. It performs like it's the cheapest cooler on there. It is around about 30-ish, I'd say around about £32, which is not a bad price, but I'm pretty sure there's cheaper stuff on the market. Maybe the Freezer 7 or the Freezer 13 from Arctic might be a better option. But then again, when you're spending £32, I'd say suggest spending a few quid extra and maybe going up to the Sirocco or the Phantom Black from Geld, or G-Lid, however you want to pronounce the name, um, because they perform drastically better as good as performance as a lot of the Arctic coolers, and in some cases better, um, for a lot less. And as I said, if you're spending £32, spend 40 quid, go down the route of getting the Sirocco. Um, we're not going to give this a recommended reward or anything, because it doesn't really do awful lot for its price. Again, we are using it on the Socket 1200. It's a hot CPU, but it does seem to uh, struggle a little bit, is probably the best way of putting it.